Well, hi folks, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're just going to take a quick look at this ARC33 radio cassette recorder by Philips. And I believe this is from the late 1970s. On the face of it, it doesn't look to be in too bad a condition, but there's a couple of little jobs we just want to do on it. So I thought it might be nice for, to share that with you guys today. So all of the knobs and switches are present, which is always good, as is the aerial and the original aerial tip. I always say that if everything is present when you uh, work on something like this, you've got a nice chance of restoring it properly. So that's always nice to have the original knobs and switches. However, you may see that the dial gauge there for the radio is exposed and there's a whole pile of unlabeled buttons on the side there. And that's because the faceplate is damaged. So we need to just glue a few parts back onto that, see if we can repair that, give it a good clean inside and out before we refit it. So that's really the cosmetic work to do. And then we'll give it a decent clean, I think. Also polish the aerial. You can see it's a bit corroded and stuff. So it just needs using, I think. And on that, the issues with the tape and the radio are, again, down to lack of use, I think, as much as anything. So at the moment, the radio isn't working properly. So if I just put that on, you can see it came and went then as I did that. Basically, the radio switch needs cleaning, I think. So we'll work that a few times and then probably put some cleaner and some lubricant on this switch on the inside. We'll also do that for the band selector as well. And the pots aren't too bad, but we'll just lubricate them, I think. Anyway, so just a bit of switch cleaning to do on the radio. Uh, the cassette, however, might also need freeing up a bit. If we press play now, oh, that's the radio has just come back on. So we'll put the select tape and Right, that's playing okay. Can't play too much for the usual copyright reasons, but anyway, fast forward. Yep, that's working. Stop, rewind. That's working. Different speeds, because we're almost at the end of the tape. So that's working quite nicely, but I think it would be quite wise just to check the condition of the belt and also maybe clean the idler tire as well, just to give everything a bit more grip if we can get in there. So, Good news, however, is that the quartz clock is still working properly. They've normally given up the ghost by now. Uh, the zebra sort of connections inside have normally uh, packed up. So these tend to have given up the ghost, as I say. So it's great to see that that's still working. So really, basically, all you need to do, I think, is clean the switches, give everything a bit of movement in there and lube, lube everything up a bit and then clean the uh, mechanism polish up any sort of idlers and uh, clean the heads as well and that sort of thing. I did notice actually when I first evaluated this, it does actually seem really quite clean inside. So it doesn't look too bad a condition. We haven't obviously looked at the uh, at the cap stand and the pinch roller and all of that yet. So I don't know quite how hard a life this has had. As I say, it doesn't look to be in terribly bad condition. I think we just need to give it the usual TLC and see if we can't get it up and running. So here we go then, thanks for joining me, let's get on with it. First job then, let's get these screws out. Well that was fun, three different sizes of screw there. Long, medium, small, medium, medium. Should just be the aerial attachment. Ah, oh, no, hang on. Aerial's actually attached. Oh, wow, okay. Just the back case, nothing else to see here. Move along. Right, screws then for the for the circuit board we've got one, two, three, okay, four. Ah, oh, that's interesting. They're definitely loose. Almost like it just plugs in. That's weird. Huh. Okay. Like a multi-plug there. That's interesting. Right. Oh, well, let's have a look at this. Let's get this open, shall we? I'm going to mark them, actually. I 
I don't know at this stage which ones actually need to come from where. So and again every screw is a different length. Short, short silver, long silver, short black. short black plus some sort of multi-plug there right the aerials probably got to come away there we go right what else is holding this in then there's a cable Cable tie is just here, and the cable tie here. And there is a screw right in the middle. I don't know if we need to remove that or not. Oh well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Okay, another long one. Gosh. Right, this time, I think the knobs are going to have to come away. One, two. The switches, maybe not. I'm not going to force them. The tuning knob, that can come off. There's another cable tie just there now let's see there is the board power switch for your radio and cassette your wavelength switch there's your erase switch just there a worm screw affair for the tuner However, this doesn't help us a great deal because we want to get to the cassette mech. There you go. Is it really that screw just there? Maybe the other screws were already fixed in through the board. So there's one screw just off to the side here that I'm getting out now. And I do believe that may actually get us access ha! okay all right well wow. well that was interesting it's certainly quite a lot different to the JVC stuff I've been working on lately the cassette deck in the end was only held in by one screw because I think some of them were also retaining the board just here as well. Also, interestingly, you've got the uh, multi-plug there, which just is like a press fit into, into the actual circuit board. That's, uh, that's unusual, not come across that very often. And also, the cassette mech, when it was removed, it actually left the transport controls in situ. I think they actually come out as well to be honest i may actually remove them and give them a proper scrub whilst i can but the whole thing is just a bit odd really <laughs> um so anyway but the good news is we can actually at least get to the pinch roller there look and and the cap stand so we can give them a clean you'll clean the head as well and just generally have a look around now i did wonder if the idlers needed any sort of work but actually it's all geared and the spindles are turning nicely so i think they just need to be used really as much as anything else so that's good stuff. So what we'll do then is we'll clean the uh, clean the running gear, clean the head, and probably remove the transport buttons to give them a decent clean, and really just get the thing back together again. I reckon not too much to do on this one. So uh, oh yeah, also I can't show you right now one-handed, but um, I'll get under the switches as well when we turn everything back over and uh, clean all the clean the switches up. So yeah, there we go. Then. Right, let's crack on. So I'm just going to clean clean the running gear. So we'll just start with the erase head. 
Oh. Wow. I did notice that the output was quite low, to be fair, on the tape and quite muffled and woolly. And uh, judging by the state, I mean, that's just the erase head for a start. So, uh, yeah. We'll give these a quick, give these a quick clean first and then go back and do it all again with a, another clean Q-tip, I think. Interesting though, it's quite, um, this one's all plastic mechanism, which I suppose has its pros, pros and cons. It's, it's not the strongest material compared to metal, obviously, but it does seem to be quite, um, quite well reinforced with the ribs and stuff although no i did wonder if there'd been a repair then but it's just that little bit of grease that's okay right so let's carry on cleaning this array's head for a second it should do it yeah it really was quite dirty i haven't seen one that dirty on the array side for quite some while playback head's okay now and we'll just get this pinch roller clean. Yeah, it was due a service, I think. I mean, yeah. Yeah, pretty grimy that. We'll just do the, uh, the cap stand while I'm thinking about it. Get that squeaky clean. And just get some more off of here. Yeah, it needed doing, didn't it? Right, I'll carry on sorting this and then we'll start putting it back together, I think. Right, did these actually come out? Yes, they did. Well, okay, one, two. I'm probably going to mix these up, aren't I? I want to make sure they're identical, he says. I want to make sure they're identical because obviously I want to go and take these out and give them a good scrub. And one of them is captive. That's interesting. Well, if we had to, we, I'm sure we could unclip that somehow. But given that the fragile quartz clock is behind there, um, I'm going to let sleeping dogs lie and go and clean just go and clean these ones along with the uh, along with the tuner dial and the volume and tone knobs or whatever they are. So I'll go and do that now because I think we'll get that back in. Then we can get get the cassette mech back in and then turn the board over to do the to do the uh, the actual switch cleaning. So that's the first job is get some things washed. Okay, here's the controls, all washed. We've cleaned the heads. Everything's moving nice and freely. So with that in mind, we've just got to carefully put all this back in. It's a bit tricky because everything has to kind of go back in at the same time. Because it's all tethered more than you might normally expect. Okay, that feels like a nice snug fit. So actually these transport controls, there you go. They don't go up inside the switches. These are literally actuators, almost remote actuators. Should try and line this up. And that actually looks quite promising. Well, that has just been absolutely horrific. I've got to say, probably the worst belt change I've ever done in my entire life. Um, the screws are tiny little slot head things that don't seem to fit any screwdrivers, but there they are, they are. That's what it is. But this motor thing here, the only way you can get the belt in is to get the motor out. And when you do that, it drops down. So you can't actually get the belt through the tiniest little gap anyway. I can't even show you most of what's going on because I'm scared to move 
any of these cables because last time i actually tried to get access all the cables came desoldered from the board because they were that nasty and i had to resolder half the like the tape heads and everything back in afterwards just to get it going again it's just been an absolute nightmare and getting the pulley through getting the cap stand through the gear on the other side and then the little bearing the brass bearing kept coming out and you couldn't line it back up to get it in the hole and oh my lord what an absolutely horrible horrible hateful job this has been nasty horrible thing um it's not even worth anything and i'm not even sure if i'm going to put this video together yet or not but to be honest i mean it's probably of i don't know who knows if it's going to be any of interest to anyone i'm having a right old rant here but to be honest i don't know is there any interest in this model is it really worth it well should i just share my pain with everybody on youtube how about that but um i'm just hopeful now that uh yeah that it's going to work i mean there's a lot more bite in this belt so you never know it might work yet but it'd be a flipping miracle if it does if i ever get all this back together again and there's little things like there's five screws in the back and every single one is a different type different size different color different shape machine screws self-tapping screws plastic stuff also oh, it's just horrible anyway there we go right let's see if we can get this back together again and the speaker's got a little metal retrain uh, restraining or retaining bar in it it's all a bit odd right anyway that seems to be in good next thing then is just to try and get these cables back in right there was a there was a connector that plugged in under here kind of doing it blind but there you go right that's in right next stage we just wanted to clean these clean and lube these switches and the pots so just put a bit of contact cleaner in the switches and just work them a few times bit of lube as well and the same just for the pots just a tiny bit of lube in there and we'll just we'll just work those they weren't too bad actually to be honest it was more it was more the switches than anything else i have to say this carriage does start to feel a bit flimsy it's obviously screwed through the board through the carriage and then into the casing so this is really like an intermediary like webbed plastic sandwich so uh, on its own it's not terribly strong right also Just want to try and get a bit of cleaner in the array switch. I'm quite sure this hasn't been used in quite some time, so now the switch isn't cleaning up quite as nicely as I would have liked. So it might just be the age of the switch, but I can't seem to clean it up particularly well. So I thought what I might just do very quickly is see if I can uh, reflow the joints. Just see if that's a bit more stable. That does seem to have fixed it, I think. Um, so maybe there was a bit of a dry joint in there. I just noticed that the uh, eject was really crunchy when I put this all back together. Um, the mechanism itself, for anyone that's interested, it's basically that very fine bent steel pin there, which when you press it, it literally just lifts it clear of the eject door. 
but what was happening is the geared part of that door was really stuck so i've just lubricated that now and the more that gets used the more that gear will start to work so that's uh that's going to be much nicer i think okay so it's all pretty much put back together again we have reflowed the switch to the uh the tape on the board there and that really seems to have helped that settled it down so i think there might have been an old dry joint or something in there that was causing that to come and go the way it was also the eject mechanism on this has to be reinstated or at least the cassette mech has to be put back in with the eject door closed it was giving me some real problems some units need to have it open some closed some don't mind this particular one was quite fussy and, and i found out after about four goes of putting things in and out that um also the the gearing on the the door doesn't like it at all the transport mechanisms all crash and don't like it so yeah so we've had to take all that back out put it back in then you have to remember to put the little pin inside the um inside the array switch in there to make that move uh about six goes later i finally put it back together and the motor died and i couldn't get anything at all turns out that whilst the radio has been in and out so many times because of course there's no play on any of these cables that one of the motor supply leads had actually come off so i've resoldered that back on yeah so what started off as being really simple and just a bit of a wipe and a clean has really turned out to be a bit of a pain in the bum really but anyways we're almost there now so i'm just going to give the thing a good clean uh and the, the good side i suppose about these extra few little gripes we've had along the way is that the uh the epoxy should have dried on the faceplate now so hopefully we'll get this all back together in a second right that's the tags back on basically i've super glued them it looks a mess from the back but what i've done is i've tried to do a neat job of super gluing to the front and then just used a bit of resin to um, reinforce the back so we'll let that uh let all that set and that'll be that hopefully obviously it will never be perfect because it was polished shiny black plastic but um it's a lot of it's hidden away let me just try and give you an idea so we may be able to do something with that later but at least they're on now that's uh, definitely a lot better the aerial's polished up beautifully so that's quite nice and refitted all the original screws are in the original and correct places so we'll get the back on just about to finish the cleanup but i'm hoping i might be able to just get a bit of uh, silver sharpie or something onto that uh, onto the faded faded color there see if we can restore that just a little bit So here it is then, the ARC33 by Philips, all finished. So what started off as a fairly simple job actually became slightly trickier. We had a few issues along the way, but I think we're sorted now. Now the radio intermittent issue we thought might have been just a dirty switch. It was really quite problematic and I did try to work it with the switch cleaner and lubricants and just mechanical sort of back and forth, if there's such a word but to no avail and it turned out that there was a dry joint on the connection on the board it's actually quite a flimsy board inside to be honest so i think over the years all that's happened is it's uh, just worked loose and dried out a bit so we've reflowed that and that's now working nicely in fact i'll just play the uh, play the radio now so it's on fm real low volume but if i just whiz through you can see how uh, sensitive the radio is I mean, there's just channels everywhere. It's so, it's so sensitive. It's great. So if we go to um, AM now and medium wave. Admittedly, I've got the uh, fluorescent lights on, which doesn't help. So you're getting all the buzzing, but that's working well anyway. And the long wave is also working. So 
So there we go. So we've got AM on long wave, medium wave. We've got FM working, no clicking. It's all there perfectly. So we've sorted the radio. That's great. Um, polished the aerial as well. That's all nice. We've given it a bit of a clean. Also fixed the uh, the face plate. One of the tags didn't take very well, to be honest. But I think that's my rubbish super glue. Um, but the other one, the main part, which was the broken off part with the tag on it, it's not it's not invisible but it's certainly a lot nicer than it was and it does allow the faceplate to stay on now so that's fantastic and also shows off that rather awesome old school clock there as well right then so if we just go on to the tape now then the tape as well had its issues um it was quite uh shall we say fiddly because it's a plastic sort of mechanism on there it is geared didn't have to change the belt because the belt was pretty good to be fair um but um yeah the, the whole mechanism is a little bit shoddy if i'm honest and um so that took a few goes back and forth the eject mechanism seemed to be quite uh sort of sensitive to what you did with it but that's all sorted we've lubricated the gear for that as well so if i can just find the tape now just seeing if i can find something to put in it for you um just reaching across and i've got a really bad recording of a, a tape here but we'll put this in just to show it working and play and that's working fast forward and rewind and the counters go in as you can see stop play again so there we go so the tapes working the radio's working, the faceplate's been fixed, she's had a bit of a clean. She is what she is. Um, we've just put a little bit of silver pen as well, just to pretty up the uh, the little mic cover there. So yeah, there we go then. That's the ARC33 from Philips. So I hope you enjoyed having a poke around this. This is the first time I've had one of these open, so I was quite interested to see what it was all about. Hope you found it interesting. We're working through a whole pile of boom boxes, eight track players, um, all sorts of stuff, personal stereos. So yeah, let me, uh, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next and I'll be back soon. So thanks very much for watching. All the best for now. Bye bye.